So you just arrived in Valdez, Alaska, and it's raining. Well, we believe you should actually count yourself lucky because there is a mystery and epic beauty to this place when the clouds hang low and the mists dance across the mountains. There is so much to do here, rain or shine. In fact, in all our time in Alaska, we have never seen wildlife like we have here in Valdez. Here are eight things you must do, see, and experience in Valdez, even if the skies are open wide and letting in pour. Come along and let us show you the unique beauty of Valdez in the rain. Valdez, Alaska is located here, on a deep fjord of Prince William Sound. It is surrounded on all sides by snow-capped peaks and the sea. And that means salmon are sure to make an appearance here. This is Solomon Gulch Hatchery. Aptly named, the hatchery sits right across the road from Solomon Gulch, where water from Solomon Lake gushes down the mountainside. There is a lot going on here. The raging waters of Solomon Gulch are a show in and of themselves, but most visitors here fixate on the dynamic show taking place where those waters meet the sea. Let's start at the beginning. A hatchery is where fish, in this case pink and silver salmon, are bred, raised, and released. Solomon Gulch is operated by the Valdez Fisheries Development Association, a community-managed nonprofit whose main purpose is to promote sustainable salmon fisheries for this region. Now, some hatcheries never see their babies again, but as we learned in episode 17, Pacific salmon are biologically programmed to come home. Every year, an average of 15.8 million pink and 83,000 silvers return to these waters, fueling commercial and sport fishing industries and contributing millions to the local economy. Only about 400,000 of them are needed to breed the next generation here at the hatchery. And here is how that works. Returning salmon are blocked from going upstream by this structure called a weir. Fish are routed instead to this fish ladder where their instincts tell them to climb. The ladder will lift about 20,000 fish into the system each day during spawning season. After climbing the ladder, the salmon reach these raceways, capable of holding 30,000 fish, where they remain until they are ready to spawn. Then, they are guided to the spawning building. They are brought into the building in groups, then released onto a conveyor. Males and females are sorted, the female eggs are collected, the male's sperm or milt is harvested, and both mixed together in buckets. You know, the old-fashioned way. The crew can spawn up to 16,000 salmon in one day, allowing the hatchery to incubate an astonishing amount of fertilized eggs, 250 million pink and 2 million silvers to be exact. The meat of these fish will not be wasted. The VFDA runs a product line called Solomon Falls to help completely utilize returning salmon. The fertilized eggs are then taken to the incubation building, where they will hatch as fry in the winter. In the spring, the pink fry live in offshore nets until they grow into smolt and are let out to sea. The hatchery releases around 250 million pink fry into the Pacific each year. They may travel as far as the Aleutians and Washington State. And of course, the remarkable thing about salmon is that the following summer, those that survived out there in the big wide world will bring themselves right back home, here as adults ready to spawn. 
Those fish that are not caught by fishermen and don't enter the hatchery spawn naturally outside the hatchery and their bodies return vital nutrients to the environment. Here we see them at low tide. Fresh water for the hatchery is provided by the hydroelectric plant right across the street. It, of course, is fueled by the dam holding back Solomon Lake 600 feet above our heads. The plant is operated by Copper Valley Electric, the region's energy cooperative. And the hatchery itself is self-sustaining through salmon sales to local processors and its own product line. It is awe-inspiring to see the swarms of fish fighting their way up to the hatchery. We have never seen anything like this. And we've definitely never seen anything like this. These stellar sea lions really do know where it's at. A virtual self-regenerating buffet of Alaskan salmon. It's not too shabby of a situation they have going on here. This guy, however, does look like he overdid it. We can't help but chuckle. We've all been there, right? Stellar sea lions are the largest of the eared seal family. Males can reach up to 11 feet long and weigh 2,500 pounds, and females can reach up to nine and a half feet long and 800 pounds. Their whiskers help them detect prey and navigate underwater. We imagine those handy whiskers are helping them out right now with poor visibility in these silty waters. Sea lions can be spotted in coastal areas across Alaska, but we have never seen any up this close. And we've definitely never seen them feeding before. Sea lions aren't the only animals brought here by this all-you-can-eat buffet. The hatchery is often frequented by otters, eagles, seagulls, bears, and seals. We are a little confused why the sea lions seem to be so choosy about which fish to catch. There are thousands swarming the edges of the stream, so why are they spending energy to apparently fish in the middle of the river? Well, we are stumped for now, but in a little bit we will see another predator exhibit similar behavior, and that might give us a clue as to what is going on here. Any trip to Valdez must include a visit to Solomon Gulch Hatchery. The self-guided tour through the hatchery is awesome, truly top-notch. The wildlife will not disappoint, nor will the falls through Solomon Gulch, which just astound in their power. It's not just the sea lions capitalizing on the moment here. Right near the hatchery on Dayville Road, bears keep coming out to feast away. If you have been in Alaska and have yet to see a bear, come to Valdez in salmon season. They will be here. Do you notice anything funny about how this bear is chowing down though? If you haven't seen it yet, 
watch closely. Despite literally thousands of fish in easy grabbing distance, this bear is being very picky about which fish to grab. Why? It's looking specifically for a female salmon. Once again, why? Watch closely. This bear is not fishing for salmon meat, but rather salmon caviar. And it's not because this is a posh bear, it's because it's a survivor. Remember in episode 17 when we talked about how the nutritional value of salmon flesh changes in the spawning phase? These salmon are well into that phase, and so their flesh is very bland and weak, not really worth the effort of killing and eating the fish. The eggs, on the other hand, are packed with nutrition. With thousands of fish swarming the river, this bear can afford to forego that not quite so worth it meat and fill up on fatty, hibernation-fueling caviar. Maybe it's watching all the wildlife chow down, but we find ourselves feeling peckish, so we head out for a bite to eat at a Valdez staple. The Fat Mermaid is a classic spot for grub in Valdez. It's right on the water, so there's not a bad seat in the house. We are fans of all things funky, quirky, and local, so this place checks all our boxes, from the seafood on the menu to the murals on the floor. While here, we take in the vibe of the mermaid. Live music, nice people, an unpretentious local feel. We like it. And if you're wondering whether the food was good, as long as you're at the mermaid, take the time to explore downtown and the marina. Travel isn't always about doing the fanciest tours and packing your schedule with every activity under the sun. It's also about winding down and just taking in the flavor of a new place. So go walk among the vessels at the marina. Think about the places they've been and the stories their crew could tell. Look up often. Take in the mountains towering over town every which way you look. If they're streaked in mist, see the beauty in that. Stroll downtown, explore its shops and cafes. Life is busy and it's hard to slow down. So when you're in Valdez, don't forget to enjoy the pitter-patter of the rain, breathe in that salty ocean air, and just be here. Twelve minutes from downtown, a monumental force snakes its way out of the Chugach Mountains. Many years ago, it carved out this very valley, which now has been filled with frigid waters that it itself replenishes. Once upon a time, it reached all the way here to the lake's farthest edge. Now, it can only be seen by rounding this mountain. Valdez Glacier stretches 20 miles long, a slowly grinding river of ice reaching far back into the heart of the Chugach Range. It ends in an abrupt wall where it meets its lake, and that wall is anything but stable. 
When it calves, it sends colossal blocks of glacial ice into the water, creating an otherworldly maze of icebergs. It is a popular activity to paddle among these frozen sculptures, even on rainy days. If anything, the surroundings are even more mystical and ethereal in this form. It is vitally important, however, to take on this venture with a guide who knows how to read the ice, especially if your aim is to approach the glacier. Sadly, three lives were lost here in 2019 when approaching blue ice at the glacier's end. Bright blue ice may be tantalizing, but it indicates the ice was recently exposed and may not yet be stable. These are the details visitors may not know, and that's why the value of local knowledge and experienced guidance can never be understated. It may seem like this lake is merely a puddle of shallow, muddy water given off by the glacier, but it is anything but. Valdez Glacier Lake is an astounding 640 feet deep. Every year, a fascinating glacial event takes place here. About five miles up the glacier, a lake forms every year where a creek is dammed by the glacier itself. The lake builds up until it reaches the height of the glacier, and then it releases in an outburst flood, draining out beneath Valdez Glacier itself. The water levels of Valdez Glacier Lake rise, and the stream below floods. This event happens once to twice a year, first in the spring when the snows melt, and sometimes in the autumn, especially in times of high rainfall. The situation is closely monitored by officials, and the community is duly alerted when the lake begins to drain. Everything we learn about Valdez Glacier reminds us that this area is beautiful, powerful, and dynamic. If one event could illustrate that truth, it would be what happened on July 7, 2020. On that day, the entire glacial ice shelf collapsed, choking the lake with icebergs and pushing the glacier's terminus back by a mile. We may look across this scene and see a serene stage, but it is a place of constant change, epic beauty, and raw power. When the rain pours hard and you just need a little indoor time, Valdez has quite the enriching trick up its sleeve. The Maxine and Jesse Museum is a treasure trove of history, artifacts, and a unique perspective-shifting education on Native Alaskan arts. It houses one of the largest collection of Alaskan Native arts and artifacts in the world, right here in Little Valdez. It is also home to an impressive array of wildlife mounts, bringing you face to face with many of the majestic creatures that call Alaska home. The collection was amassed by Maxine Whitney, who moved to Alaska with her husband Jesse in 1947. She traveled through the territory buying art and pieces to sell in her gift shop. In 1998, Miss Whitney generously donated the collection to Prince William Sound Community College, and here it is, put on display for us today. It is well worth the time to come here and closely reflect on the perspectives and thought-provoking questions posed here at the museum. This question in particular gives me pause. 
Why do you find French tapestries in art galleries and 19th century totem poles in natural history museums? Why is one called art and the other artifact? Think on this a bit. The collection here is extensive. If you have not had the opportunity to take in the various forms of Alaska Native art, this is the place to dive deep. The collection also includes a display of artifacts that give just a taste and flavor of pioneer life in the last frontier. It's not hard to imagine yourself braving the cold and harsh winters, trying to carve out a life within the vast wilderness. In all, the Whitney Museum is a gem of Valdez, one that no visitor should ever miss. Admission is free, with donations appreciated, ensuring that no one miss the opportunity to learn about this facet of Alaskan culture and history. So where have we called home all this time? Just east of town, a training dike was built in 2017 to hold back the erosive waters of Valdez Glacier Stream. This is where the waters of Valdez Glacier meet the sea, and the braided tendrils of this wide delta began to threaten an important radio tower. At the time of this filming in 2023, it is still a spot for wild camping, and wild it is. It is here that we truly begin to fall in love with the beauty of this landscape in the rain. Every morning we wake enthralled by our surroundings. We find it hard to believe that any bright sunny day could compete with the majesty of this site. It just keeps getting more and more epic. There's a saying that it's important to find the silver lining of every rain cloud. Well, we feel a companion phrase could be that we should always look for the mountains in the mist. For when these two dance together, the sight is something spectacular to behold. One day, we notice a new neighbor exploring the creek nearby, and this leads to an exciting discovery. A little waterway near our bus is positively swarming with salmon. Salmon season in Valdez runs from late May to September, 
And during that time, many of the streams and rivers running into Port Valdez are bound to be churning with pinks and the occasional silver and chum. No doubt the salmon swarming Solomon Gulch are a sight like no other, but it is also fascinating to see them in this setting. Where the stream bed is shallow, they put on quite a show, revealing to us just how determined they are to plow onwards upstream. A sure fire place to witness salmon like this is the Forest Service Information Center located right before entering town. We feel lucky to be also catching this show right here on McKinley Road. We marvel at watching this phase of their life cycle, even blown away to witness the dance of a mating pair. The life cycle of Pacific salmon is so very interesting. If you are intrigued and want to dive deep and learn more about these amazing creatures, you should absolutely check out episode 17. Opportunities to see salmon in the wild abound here in Valdez. For those visiting during salmon season, witnessing this fascinating fish in its natural habitat is a must-do experience. Our time in Valdez is nearly up and we can't help feeling it is time because there is one thing that has been making us very nervous. The rain has been so relentless that the water levels of Valdez Glacier Stream are rising steadily, now almost by the hour. The ice dammed lake five miles up Valdez Glacier has yet to have its second outburst flood of the year and we wonder if we are beginning to push our luck. We are a thousand feet from the ocean and a trifecta of high tide, glacial outburst, and an already flooded river may land us in a situation we do not want to be in. But before we leave, there is one must do left for us here in Valdez. It seems that Dayville Road is the place to be during salmon season. Anglers flock here, camping up and down the road, rods in hand, and ice-filled coolers at the ready. We want a little piece of the action. All right, it's fishing time. For those who love to fish, this is a must when visiting Valdez. It's not just shore fishing. Multiple charters operate out of this area, and local businesses offer freezing and shipping your catch back home. Whether you're out on a boat, standing on the shore, or fishing a mountain stream, Valdez is an angler's paradise. Especially because it is quite an experience to fish to such an incredibly scenic backdrop. The wildlife certainly does not disappoint either. Sea lions course up and down the water's edge with the same mission as all us humans, to catch a fish not too far into the spawning phase who is fresh in from the ocean. It proves tougher than we thought. It seems that most of the fish close to shore are spawned out, and the meat really won't be worth harvesting. 
It's better that they go back to the environment where their bodies will have much more purpose. Over and over, this is the case. We learn a valuable lesson today. It seems a pair of waders is a worthwhile investment for shore fishing. We see those who wade farther out having much better luck pulling in healthy fish. Ah well, these are the lessons we learn along the way. The day finally comes to leave Valdez. We now embark on a road trip with one singular mission, to find and capture the fleeting beauty of autumn colors in Alaska. As if to send us off, Mother Nature gives us one final spectacular show. All that rain of Valdez swelled the cascading rivers and waterfalls of Keystone Canyon, and it is incredible. We take this as a good sign that our mission to find the fall colors will be a success. But that proves harder than we think. How so? Well, you'll just have to wait until next time on Art We There Yet. Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a like. Subscribe to our channel. Send us a comment below. And for exclusive content and a behind the scenes view of the Art We There Yet journey, join us on Patreon. See you over on Patreon.